Crowds hijacking shows has become a common occurrence in modern wrestling. As the fans look to send a message to those in the back that they don't like what they're seeing. That or the fans might be so uninterested in the match, the wrestlers or the entire show in front of them that they'd prefer to just entertain themselves. A WWE Championship ship match in the ring and these fans are going away! Then there are times when a crowd is so in favour of a specific wrestler that it can provide a hostile atmosphere for the opponent. You and I were here at ringside WrestleMania 22 in Chicago. John Cena versus Triple H and... For this list, we've decided to isolate specific matches where it was the crowd that stole the show. Tomahawk chop going here in Atlanta. <laughs> Big Briscoe crowd. That's the biggest Tomahawk chop of all time. As we look at 10 times fans hijacked a match. Savio Vega vs Mabel. To kick things off, we're going back to one of the earliest instances of fans hijacking a match. And that takes us to the 1995 King of the Ring. This show is considered one of the worst pay-per-views the WWF has ever produced. Topped off by that year's King of the Ring tournament final between Savio Vega and Mabel. The fans were quiet for the early part of the match with the action in the ring giving them nothing to shout about. The long rest hold spots didn't help and eventually the Philadelphia crowd got so bored they started an ECW chant. Vince McMahon on commentary even somewhat acknowledges this by telling us to listen in. Although perhaps he thought the fans were actually getting behind the wrestlers in the ring. Either way, the next time the WWF came to Philadelphia on pay-per-view, wrestlers from ECW were featured in a prominent role. Hey, wait just a moment. There's a local wrestling group here in Philadelphia and obviously trying to make a name for themselves here. So perhaps these chants inadvertently planted seeds for the ECW invasion that came further down the line. Although the fans here weren't as rowdy as they would be in the rest of the hijacks on our list. John Cena vs Rob Van Dam. Staying with ECW as we look at the iconic One Night Stand 2006 event and its main event for the WWE Championship as Rob Van Dam challenged John Cena. Right from the entrances it's clear that Cena is in enemy territory, with the crowd being just as much anti-Cena as they were pro-RVD. And despite being a massive babyface, John would receive one of the most negative reactions ever witnessed in wrestling. His signature shirt throw into the crowd was proof of this. Instead of the shirt being caught by one lucky fan like normal, it would be launched straight back at Cena multiple times with some spitting on the shirt and one fan even wiping his ass with it. Soon, toilet paper would be thrown at Cena and then the chants would begin. Paper TP as they say. Cena would embrace the heel reaction at one point putting his feet on the rope for leverage then taunting the crowd and later even punching out the referee. But it all caught up to John with Edge running in and spearing the champion through a table allowing Van Damme to capitalise with the 5 star frog splash. Paul Heyman was there to count the fall as RVD became the new WWE champion being spurred on by one of the most raucous crowds in wrestling history. Kurt Angle vs Randy Orton It wasn't just Cena who faced the brunt of the ECW fanatics at one night stand. As earlier in the card, Randy Orton received similar abuse during his encounter with Kurt Angle, who had just pledged his loyalty to the ECW brand. And since Orton, much like Cena, is perhaps the prototypical WWE superstar, this meant the reaction from the New York faithful would be unforgiving, with one young fan even landing a mini punch to the arm of the legend killer during Randy's entrance. And as if Orton couldn't feel any more out of place in ECW, his falling pyro gave the people added ammunition for the chance they were about to unleash. Perhaps it was one chant too many for Orton, that or one ankle lock attempt too many, as Angle would finally lock in the submission hold. And with Orton not wanting Kurt to break his ankle again, he had no choice but to tap. This put an end to a good contest that was made even better by the fans' involvement, as the two examples we've covered from One Night Stand 2006 are cases where the fans hijacking the show enhanced both matches. John Cena vs Randy Orton Thus far we've seen two separate matches where a hostile crowd went against Cena and Orton. So imagine what happened when they wrestled each other in front of another round audience with the Viper defending the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. This occurred at the 2014 Royal Rumble and was watched by a Pittsburgh crowd who were fed up with seeing Orton and Cena wrestle. They made this known before the match even began with the first of numerous chants for Daniel Bryan, someone the people were much more interested in seeing. What do you see, King? Once things got underway, their usual Let's Go Cena, Cena Sucks chants rang out. <laughs> However, the fans would then direct their chants away from the match again. 
Then you make us wish we were deaf. <laughs> Never give up, even stronger. The crowd would turn their attention back to the action briefly, although it wasn't because they liked what they were seeing. The audience did appear to get more on board with the match following a compelling sequence, which featured a ref bump, belt shot, multiple finishers, and a series of near falls. However, following this, the people were back to their old ways as they made it known how they'd rather be watching the Divas instead. <laughs> then after each man stole each other's finisher, it looked like Cena was about to secure the victory after locking in the STF in the center of the ring. But the Wyatt family's interference allowed Orton to take advantage with one final RKO, which ensured he retained his title. The Pittsburgh audience will have been happy to finally see the match end, but we can't fault the wrestlers who still put in quite the shift in the ring. Only the fans were having none of it, as seen by how they reacted, since this was a match they simply did not want to see. Batista vs Alberto Del Rio The 2014 Royal Rumble would also mark the return of Batista, much to the anger of many people who were upset to see the animal win the Rumble match instead of fan favourite Daniel Bryan. The fallout saw Batista being booed out of arenas every week as it was clear that audiences did not want to see him in the main event of WrestleMania. This was especially apparent just a month before the show of shows, when Batista battled Alberto Del Rio at the Elimination Chamber 2014. The crowd was so against Batista that they even began to cheer Del Rio, something that was a rare sight even when Alberto had previously been a babyface. Del Rio tried to heal it up before the bell by pretending to be injured as a way of gaining the upper hand before the match got started, but this only led to him getting cheered with Del Rio chant. Hey, Mexico's greatest export! They're actually cheering for Alberto! Then came a chant that embodied Batista's entire 2014 comeback run. Big Dave would also be reminded of who the crowd wanted to see at WrestleMania instead of him. Well, you knew that Batista was going to want to compete. The fans continued to ignore the match, this time chanting for wrestlers who either weren't with the company or on television at the time. I think they're chanting, we want Lesnar. The fans would then get behind Del Rio, however, a collision with the exposed turnbuckle meant the animal was able to take control, hitting the Batista bomb which earned the win. Del Rio would reveal that during the match, Batista was taken aback by the crowd's reaction, but Alberto knew they just had to go with it, as the fans' minds were made up. Seth Rollins vs Baron Corbin So as we've seen already, if certain crowds aren't interested in the storyline or either of the wrestlers performing, then the people will have no issue hijacking the match. And this was what happened at the 2019 Stomping Grounds pay-per-view, where Baron Corbin challenged Seth Seth Rollins for the Universal Championship. Corbin revealed Lacey Evans as the special guest referee. The fans weren't happy with this or the direction of the story and chanted, this is stupid as a result. And the WWE Universe uh, voicing their displeasure with the choice. They then decided to shift their focus away from the match by chanting for other wrestlers and even a rival promotion. Got a little bit of influence with those in power. WWE fans here in Tacoma all over Baron Corbin. The wrestlers were however able to garner a good reaction after Seth powerbombed Corbin through the announce table. However, given the match was more storyline driven than action focused, it was always going to be a struggle for the wrestlers to keep the crowd since the fans didn't even like the storyline to begin with, as the match was forced to restart twice to try and get over how much Seth was being screwed over by the heel ref, Lacey Evans. The fans did chant for Becky Lynch though and popped once she made her run in, which then allowed Rollins to take over as he hit a curb stomp to get the win and retain the Universal Championship. In the end, the wrestlers were put in a tough spot as the match was built up poorly on television in the weeks prior. This then led to a negative response when Lacey Evans was revealed as the guest referee that in turn resulted in the people in the building ignoring the match. Six women tag. The Raw after WrestleMania is always a highlight of the WWE calendar each year, as it's always the most hardcore of hardcore fans that go to the show. This makes for quite a party atmosphere as people flock from all over the world to attend. And while the fans will still get behind their favorites, if the action in the ring doesn't interest them, they'll have no problem hijacking the match. There have been countless examples of this happening over the years, and the first one we'll look at went down at the Raw after WrestleMania 31 in 2015, where a six women's tag team match saw AJ Lee, Paige, and Naomi take on Natalia and the Bella Twins. The match began with chants of We Want Bailey, who at the time was a member of the NXT roster. By Natalia, Natalia trying to do the same to Naomi, and she does. But it would be during the commercial break that the chants became less PG, as the audience would aim chants at the women in the match and their boyfriends, first starting with Nikki Bella and her then partner, John Cena. <laughs> Attention then turned to the married women in the match and their husbands. 
The chants fizzled out as the show returned from the break, as the fans began to get on board with the match. That loss affected the Bella Twins. The Bella ones that were guys, Nikki Bella wants to do the same thing. And this seemingly spurred the babyfaces on, as they managed to get the victory after Nikki struck Brie by accident, which allowed Naomi to hit the rear view, which got the three. In the end, the match didn't come off too badly on television, with the crude chants occurring mostly during the commercial, but these chants are proof of just how crazy the Raw after WrestleMania crowd can be. Randy Orton vs Sheamus. Next, we'll highlight the match that started it all when it came to the fans really hijacking a match during the Raw after WrestleMania. Randy Orton took on Sheamus, and it's fair to say that neither man would have expected how the crowd was about to react to their match. The chants began straight away with the fans singing Ole. Well, you're right about that. You know what that means? Absolutely anything can happen in this match. <laughs> They then started chants for Mikey Oda, Dolph Ziggler, and pretty much anyone but the wrestlers in the ring. Believed in Big Show, and Big Show ended up. It's funny, uh, you're hearing a lot of chants tonight. My lord, this place is insane. Smart they're chanting for not insane, they're brilliant. Now they're chanting for Lava. They're chanting my name. They've oh, gone nuts. There they go. This is. Did nuts. you just see the look on Sheamus' face? We want Randy. The Big Show then interfered, which put the match to a stop, which the people thanked him for. Thank you, Big Show. Then the crowd gave themselves a pat on the back as the segment came to a close. Big Show doing what he can because he can. This match was significant as it not only set the tone for the future Raw after WrestleMania shows, but it would also influence how future crowds would behave whenever they didn't care for a match taking place in the ring, with chance for wrestlers not in the match and Mexican waves becoming more common. John Cena and Roman Reigns vs The Miz and Samoa Joe. Our final two entries on the list are examples of how a wrestler can take advantage of the crowd hijacking a match. First, we have a tag team match from Raw in August 2017. Here, John Cena teamed with Roman Reigns to face The Miz and Samoa Joe. Right when the match got underway, Cena would stop to acknowledge the fans playing with a beach ball. Cena then got upset, much like the crowd did once security took away the beach ball. Beach ball looks familiar from last night at SummerSlam. Like the same thing happened the night prior to SummerSlam where Cesaro jumped the barricade and destroyed the beach ball after it had been confiscated. Both of these made for cool moments that added to each match instead of taking away from them like would have been the case had the wrestlers just ignored what was going on. There was still more to come however when it came to the Raw match. Fans first rained down asshole chants at the security for taking the ball away. Samoa Joe, still in a foul. We want beach ball chants then followed. To keep themselves entertained, the crowd then busted out a Mexican wave, much to the frustration of the Miz in the ring. And Roman Reigns earlier that this is his show. But it was much to the delight of Cena who decided to join in with the wave. When in another fun moment, John once again addressed the audience, hijacking the match. When most wrestlers would have simply ignored it and continued working. John Cena thrives under these situations. The fans didn't attempt to hijack things any further as the team of Cena and Reigns picked up the win when Cena countered a skull crushing finale into an attitude adjustment in what was an overall fun match thanks to the wrestlers response to the Brooklyn crowd's antics. John Cena vs Dolph Ziggler As just saw, Cena is a pro when it comes to reacting to fans. He can take something that might normally take away from a match, or as we'll see, a promo, and turn it so it adds to them. One of the best examples of Cena reacting to a crowd in a match occurred when John defended the United States Champion vs Dolph Ziggler in an open challenge on Raw in 2015. Early on, Cena noticed some rumblings from the crowd and immediately looked over to see what was going down. Once he realized what happened, Cena told Ziggler to lay out as John grabbed the mic. A successful marriage proposal occurring in the crowd shows us how anything truly can happen in the WWE. She said yes, we got a married couple here tonight. As she said yes chants then echoed throughout the arena. Cena and Dolph finished out a very good back and forth match, continuing to keep the crowd invested with the finish coming after an out of nowhere AA. Now while this match wasn't a typical fan hijack like other entries on this list, it was an example of a specific moment temporarily hijacking a match. But since it was noticed by Cena and then acknowledged on camera, it resulted in a unique moment that was followed by an awesome match. So as we've seen, the fans can hijack a match in numerous different ways. It's always interesting to see how the fans react, as without them, resting can get very boring very quickly. If you wanna know, what 316 day is all about, give me a hell yeah. And that brings us to the end of this video. As always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you like this one, be sure to check out our video on 10 times wrestlers forgot their line during a promo. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.